Today's the day I'll be going on board Pacific Adventure's maiden cruise from Sydney. This is the very first time that Pacific Adventure will be sailing with paying passengers on board and it is the third and final ship to make it into the P&O Australia fleet. So join me as we head off on the maiden cruise. Pacific Adventure's maiden voyage was a three night cruise to nowhere departing Sydney's White Bay Cruise Terminal on October 22nd, and I had been planning for months to be on board. To mark the occasion, I booked a Vista Suite, knowing that the room would provide access to the brand new Byron Beach experience, which I was very much looking forward to trying. We finally walked on board and heading over to the room. It is the first passenger cruise, so the rooms are ready. Normally they're ready around one o'clock. Uh, and at the moment it's about 12.30. So going to go and check out the room, but this maiden cruise is already feeling very exciting. I'll be posting a full suite tour to the channel soon. So normally I film a ship tour the day that I get on and today I'm trying something different which is to film most of it tomorrow morning and the morning after that. But I'm going to go and try and film a little bit now just so I can relax because I feel a bit anxious. After just a little bit of filming it was time to enjoy lunch and I always recommend the waterfront on boarding day. After the excitement of the morning it's nice to take a load off and let it sink in that you're on a cruise. Everything I ordered for lunch was fresh and tasty, and the baked berry crumble in particular was a standout. So it's day one on board the Pacific Adventures maiden voyage, but we are still in Sydney at this point. We've come over to the Byron Beach Club to enjoy Sail Away. This space is incredible and I can't wait to bring you a full review and tour of the Byron Beach Club experience on board p &O. It really has been done so well. From what I've so far experienced of it, I'm enjoying it very much. So we're about to enjoy Sail Away. The flags are flapping because it's super windy here on the top decks, but a great afternoon I'm sure is in store for everyone on board the maiden voyage of the Pacific Adventure. We've departed Sydney and now we're about to head under the Sydney Harbour Bridge. This is the largest cruise ship to sail under the Harbour Bridge as far as I'm aware. And this was the ship that had its funnel shortened so that it could actually do that. Uh, fantastic day out here despite the windy and slightly wet weather. The captain just said that we're going to have a 2.2 metre clearance as we sail underneath the Harbour Bridge. 2.2 metres is not very much. <laughs> At check-in earlier in the day, guests were informed that Luke's Bar and & Grill and 400 Grady would be closed on this sailing. As well, the pantry would only be open for breakfast and lunch and an early children's dinner. This was probably a sign of things to come on the dining front. I used the app as soon as I was on board to reserve dinner in each of the complimentary restaurants so we could sample all of the inclusive options on this three night cruise. We've had a fantastic afternoon, just enjoyed Sail Away, came out of Sydney Heads and it's a little bit breezy out there, a little bit choppy, but still any day on a cruise is much better than a day on land. 
Tonight we're off to Angelo's for dinner, so I've made a booking there for 7.15. One of my favorite things about being on a cruise is that you can go and have a pre-dinner drink, uh, which is exactly what we're going to do now, and we're going to the Ocean Bar on Deck 7 for a quick cocktail, then it's off to dinner, and we'll see what else the night holds. Angelo's remains my favorite of the included dining venues. The menu has changed a little from my last time on P&O, with some of the pasta options swapped out with alternatives. The risotto starter was well cooked and delicious. The flounder likewise was tasty and the sides were the perfect accompaniment. Dessert was also a winner, with the tiramisu and custard cake becoming firm favorites. Unfortunately, and despite an enjoyable dinner tonight, Complimentary dining was just not going to be a highlight on this cruise. After dinner, we stumbled across the Bianco party in the atrium. Cruise director Julie and the entertainment team even gave us onlookers a bit of a show. Meanwhile, in the Adventure Hotel, the Chiefs were playing to a packed house. As many of you know by now, one of my favorite things about cruising is that you can plan every detail or just stumble across something fun like we did tonight. I decided to head back to the room but detoured through the top deck. I saw that a movie was playing on the big screen but decided it was time to call it a night. It's just after 6am and I've just walked out to start filming the ship tour. As I said before, normally I do this on the first day, but this time I tried my best not to. So now that everyone is still asleep, I'm gonna go down and start filming. Before bed last night, I placed an order for room service breakfast, which is an included perk for P&O Suites. It was scheduled to arrive between 8 and 8.30, but it arrived at 9. Unfortunately, the food was cold. The bread seemed stale and the eggs were basically hard boiled. It seemed to me that the food had probably been prepared by the kitchen on time, but that the delivery was delayed. I finished filming this morning, came back to the room, had a much needed coffee from the Nespresso coffee machine that is in the suite. And after breakfast, decided it was time to go and check out the Byron Beach Club experience. Unfortunately, the weather is not amazing. I'm looking out the balcony at the moment. A little bit gray, a little bit windy, but uh, I have in my hands thongs, board shorts, and a jumper, which should tell you exactly what I'm expecting outside. So come along and we're going to see what the Byron Beach Club experience is all about. The Byron Beach Club is located on deck 16 all the way forward. It's a fair stroll from the back of the ship. Despite the grey weather, the rain was so far holding off and if anything, it was kind of warm and humid and I was looking forward to taking a dip in the club's pool. Unfortunately, I saw that the pool was closed. I had noticed that the hot tubs were closed yesterday, but at that time the pool was very much open. We made our way over to the comfortable lounges to soak in the club vibe. The space is really beautiful, with plush furniture and branded cushions, plus shade sails and private gazebos that are available on a first come first serve basis. I noticed how quiet it was, and when I asked about music, the crew told me that the stereo system in this section was awaiting repairs. Unfortunately, that would be another theme of this cruise. We ordered a drink and got into some of the deck games that were laid out. Forward of the club, I could see one of the new edge activities, this one called the Bridge Roof Walk. So the Byron Beach Club has been fun, but there is a bit of an issue where at the moment there is no water in the pool or in the Whirlpool hot tubs. Uh, we've spoken to the crew and they're fantastic. They're absolutely amazing, the crew in the Byron Beach Club. Um, and they have explained that they have been told that the pool is essentially broken or non-functional and they don't know when it's going to be repaired. 
Um, it's a bit of a shame because it's become quite a nice sunny day. It's a little bit warm and so to be able to use that pool would have been a really great experience which is something that is obviously advertised as part of the Byron Beach Club uh, day out at sea. So to not have that is a bit of a disappointment. But I am looking over at the line that has formed at the twin racing water slides and earlier in the day that was um, not existent because the weather wasn't playing very nice but it's great to see that people are looking to enjoy the slide so we're going to go over now and have a look i'm not going to participate at this particular point but we're going to go and have a look and see what they're doing uh, i can also see the pino edge has the flying fox set up and there is a ropes course as well as a rock climbing wall so there's a lot that they've got uh, on the Pacific Adventure that the Encounter doesn't yet have, but will have by about March next year. So let's go up and have a look. The Twin Racing Water Slide entry is located behind the big screen, with a stairway for the slides and also the Flying Fox. The structure itself is enormous, and the slides extend out over the side of the ship. The slide exit is conveniently located near the entrance to the upper level of the indoor family pool zone. There's also a timer so you can even keep track of your fastest time. The flying fox sees people zip right over the top of the pool deck. One of the Byron Beach Club perks is that the crew will take your order for food from the poolside Grady Pronto and Luke's Burger Bar, and then they'll deliver it to you. As has become the norm, the paid food options on P&O are really exceptional. A few games of Connect Four and a couple of cocktails saw us through an ultimately relaxing, if not entirely as advertised, afternoon in the Byron Beach Club. Tonight's dinner is at Dragon Lady, one of the complimentary restaurants on board. Luke's Bar and Grill and 400 Gradi are both closed on this cruise, unfortunately. So we didn't have an opportunity to go there, although I really wanted to go to Luke's Bar and Grill, but that's okay. Dragon Lady it is, come along. There's no doubt that Dragon Lady is a beautiful venue. The menu looks much the same as what we recently experienced on board Pacific Encounter. And as a group of four, we decided to try everything on it. Honestly, at this point I stopped filming and I didn't even realize until I went back to look at my footage. The food was not up to par. I like to think that I'm fair and I always try to be diplomatic and constructive in terms of my feedback and reviews, but in this case it was simply not good. I was disappointed. Never mind, we went to the atrium and found a spot at Charlie's Bar where we could watch the Gatsby night festivities and enjoy in a very anti-prohibition style drink. A few very fun hours later, we followed our rumbling stomachs up to deck 14 where it was impossible to miss the alluring smell of freshly cooked pizzas. It seems that others had the same idea. raining this morning so I went into the gym to do a little bit of a treadmill walk to make up for last night's midnight pizza and now I'm just going back to the room to have a shower and get ready and freshen up for whatever lies ahead today. Yeah, one thing that lay ahead was the realization that the shower had one temperature, scalding hot. I had noticed there was an issue the day prior and reported it to reception but it hadn't been fixed. One of the additional perks of being in a Byron Beach Club room or suite is that you get breakfast at Angelo's Italian. So that's one of the complimentary restaurants that's open for dinner every night. But on board Pacific Adventure and Pacific Encounter, they actually operate it as breakfast for Byron Beach Club suite guests. So going to go and check that out now and see what it's like. I'm fairly certain the menu in Angelo's is the same as that in the main waterfront restaurant, but the advantage of having a separate dining room was obvious. There was absolutely no wait for a table and the service was super attentive. We shared the buttermilk pancakes 
and then I opted for smashed avo with poached eggs. If you've watched my previous p and vlogs, you'll know that I've really talked up the poached eggs on their ships, but I think my poached egg luck may have run out. They once again arrived hard boiled. Outside, the weather showed no signs of improvement, so a cozy day indoors was on the cards. We went to the Marquee Theatre to watch The Gong Show, basically an open mic talent show with performances put on by our fellow passengers. They were challenged to do their comedic best and would be gonged off the stage if they weren't doing too well. I give them all credit and props, I don't think I'd have the courage to get up there. The audience was very supportive with their applause and laughter. An afternoon pick me up in the form of an espresso martini was in order and then we did a little bar hop in between the lobby and the blue room before settling in for the final night of this short maiden voyage. Pacific Adventure sailed into Sydney Harbour early the next morning and I reflected on my overall experience on board. As I hope most of you know, I'm a passionate proponent for the local cruise industry and in particular, I've come to really enjoy the unique Australian twist that p and continue to bring to local cruising. From beautifully designed public spaces to incredibly friendly crew, p and offer a very solid cruise holiday experience for new and seasoned cruisers. From the bar and wait staff and the room stewards to the entertainment crew, the people on board really made the experience. Still, I just can't overlook some of the issues. A scalding hot shower, a toilet that wouldn't flush, a leak in the bathroom, generally disappointing complimentary food and food options, as well as the non-functioning pool and hot tubs in the Byron Beach Club. I know that many of these issues were experienced by others on board as well, so it wasn't a unique experience, but I also know that for every one of us that had a problem, there were probably 10 that didn't. Ultimately, my view is that Pacific Adventure was not ready for service. Though I have no doubt that p and will iron out these kinks, my view is they should have given themselves more time. Still though, as the old saying goes, a bad day on a cruise is much better than a good day on land. <laughs>